Although in this wet floor installation you see the walls are lined in plasterboard, which is common in the UK building industry, we would highly recommend the use of our 12mm waterproof wall panelling, due to its many advantages over plasterboard. It not only gives a waterproof substrate for tiling onto, but it also gives an increased insulation value in the room, a far stronger adhesive grip to tiles, and has anti-mould properties. So, you're ready to install your tileable raised wet zone shower tray. Before you begin, check you have two boxes. Upon opening the large box, you will find a 900 by 850 mm sub-element base, a 900 by 900 mm shower tray, and the shower tray extension piece which is 900 by 950 millimetres. With your product you will find an installation DVD and instructions. We recommend that you take some time to properly read the instructions before you start and check that you have all the parts shown in the instruction manual. You now need to measure the width of the area that the wet zone is going to be installed in. The complete kit allows for a maximum length of 1850 millimetres. If the area where the wet zone is being fitted is smaller than 1850 millimetres in length, you will need to cut the shower tray extension piece down to fit the size of the area. When cutting the extension piece down in size, please make sure you cut the end with no lip as there is a 10 millimetre preformed fall to take the water towards the shower waste. Simply mark the product as shown and cut with a handsaw. Then place the sub-element base on the floor and clearly mark the waste pipe position. Cut a channel out in the sub-element base to accommodate your waste pipe. This should be no more than 60mm wide and can be cut at any angle required. Now place the sub-element base and extension piece in the place where they will be installed to ensure they fit together neatly. You will then need to draw a line along the floor so you know where to spread your fixing adhesive. In the installation kit you will find a bottle of wood floor primer and a paintbrush. Pour the wood floor primer over the area where you have marked and spread evenly with the paintbrush. Then leave this to dry for approximately 30 minutes. Once the floor primer has dried, you will need to mix together the Fix KST adhesive, which is used for fixing the shower tray and the sub-element to the floor. It is very important that you follow the instructions on the side of the bag. We would recommend that you mix using an electric whisk as this gives a better consistency for the adhesive. In your fixing kit you will find protective gloves and a notched adhesive trowel. We would strongly recommend the use of these gloves while mixing and spreading adhesives. Now spread the adhesive over the floor evenly. Don't worry if the floor is slightly out of level as this adhesive can also be used to level the floor. Do not use all the fixed KST at this time, as a small amount will be required to bed the shower tray down to the sub-element base later. Once you have covered the floor area where the shower is going to be fitted, place your sub-element base firmly in position. Now check that it is level. In your installation kit, you will also find a tube of Fix MD gun adhesive. Apply a wavy line of this along the edge of the sub-element base. And also apply to the two edges of the shower tray extension, where it will touch the walls.
lay the extension piece into place. Then press down firmly. Use a spirit level to ensure that the 10mm preformed fall is running towards the waste and drain. You are now ready to install your waste pipe and trap, which is found in the installation kit. The waste trap and fittings are all solvent weld products. We recommend that you keep all pipes and drainage parts clean at all times, and that they are cleaned properly with the appropriate solvent waste pipe cleaner prior to connection of all the fittings. After cleaning, apply the solvent weld adhesive as shown. The pipe molded to the trap is a two inch standard solvent pipe and has a built in three degree fall. Firstly, you need to fit the 2 inch solvent connector to the trap in order to then connect to the rest of your waste pipe. We also supply in the kit a 2 inch to 1.5 inch reducer should you need to connect to a 1.5 inch waste pipe. You must bear in mind however that reducing the waste pipe to 1.5 inches from 2 inches will reduce the maximum flow rate of the drain from approximately 60 litres to 45 litres per minute. Your drain is now ready for attaching to your waste pipe. Please ensure at this stage that the top of the waste is level and also is centred on the shower tray above. This is very important for the connection of the trap to the shower tray later on in the installation. Once the solvent adhesive is dry, it is vital that the drain is tested for leaks prior to installing the shower tray. Now using the Fix MD Gun Adhesive, apply a wavy line along the edges of the shower tray where it will touch the walls. With the remainder of the Fix KST Adhesive, spread it evenly over the sub-element base with your notched trowel. Then, using the silicone lubricant provided in the waste kit, generously spread it around the black rubber O-ring on the shower trap. Again, this is very important for the connection of the trap. With the remainder of the tube of Fix MD adhesive, you should now run a wavy line across the lip of the shower tray extension piece. Now, bed down the shower tray into position. Placing both hands through the hole in the shower tray, pull the trap up into position until it firmly clicks into place. Check that the edges of the shower tray are level and then leave to dry for three to four hours depending on room temperature. Now it is time to seal the shower base to the wall using the waterproof tape, adhesive and internal corners. Place the two internal corner pieces provided into position and clearly mark around them. Remove the corners and using the protective gloves paint on the Pro Seal tape adhesive. Then press the corners firmly into position and paint over with the Pro Seal. To seal the edges of the shower tray, you will need to use the waterproof tape provided and ensure that all edges are covered and sealed. The tape should be cut to length, leaving an overlap for the corners of approximately 30mm. The tape should be positioned half onto the tray and half up the wall. Pro Seal adhesive should then be applied to the wall and the shower base as shown and the waterproof tape pressed into position. All tape should then be painted over with Pro Seal. This should be repeated on all joints.
The Pro Seal Adhesive is a very important part of the installation as it not only waterproofs the joints but offers the same flexibility as the waterproof tape. This ensures that the seals between the shower tray and the walls will always be maintained even if you get any movement in the fabric of the building. It is also very important for the guarantee of the product. Once all edges have been taped and sealed, it is very important you also seal the joint between the shower tray and the shower tray extension piece using the same procedure. Please leave for approximately two hours to dry before tiling, depending on the room temperature. Place the disposable tiling aid into the drain. Using a suitable, flexible tiling adhesive, begin tiling. For tiling these shower bases, we recommend the use of an S1 cement-based tile adhesive with flexible additives such as Stone Fix, which will give you a very high adhesion grip and a good degree of flexibility. The beauty about these tileable shower trays are that they can be tiled in many different types and sizes of tile. It is, however, very important that you note the following facts. We would recommend a tile that offers a good slip resistance, as a high polished tile combined with soapy water can sometimes be very slippy. Regarding the size of the tiles, any size tile can be used. However, if you use a tile bigger than 100mm in any direction, then the tiler must follow the falls in the shower tray with a cut line in order to maintain the pre-manufactured falls in the shower base. Here we are showing the tiling in a small mosaic, which as you can see, does not require cuts to accommodate these falls. Once grouting has been completed, remove the tiling aid and place the shower drain top into the shower tray before cutting down. Measure the distance from the finished tiles to the top of the shower drain as shown and note this measurement. You then need to cut this distance from the bottom of the centre drain section using the ribs in the plastic to help you achieve a square cut. This can be cut easily using a hacksaw as shown. This will ensure that it fits level with the finished tiles. To secure the shower top in place, use four blobs of Fix MD gun adhesive as shown. Then grout to the edge of the stainless steel rim. Drop the bowl into the drain and then push the internal dome into place so it fits tight as shown. A hair trap is also supplied and will drop into position. This is easily removable for future cleaning of the drain. Finally, place the stainless steel grid on top to finish off. There are options for the stainless steel grid. Either the standard grid, which is removable by hand, or a designer grid, which is made from solid stainless steel and has screws to secure it to the base. This is often used not only as an added design feature, but also in commercial applications.